Hi everyone, it's Mel from Sparkly Belly and welcome back to the Business of Belly Dance series part 2. Last week, Georgia shared with us a really comprehensive guide on how to host events with celebrity dancers. If you missed it, check it out from the link in the description after watching this video. In the guide, she mentions you should have a photographer or videographer record your event. This is really important for many reasons. You can share the great memories with the participants after the event, and you can review and figure out what you can do better next time, and you can use the images and footage for promotion next time around. Plus, as I mentioned in my ebook, Belly Dancer in Business, I highly recommend belly dancers share their own work in video format because unfortunately text and images don't showcase your work as a belly dancer as well as videos do. And after I launched my ebook, one of the readers said, I've been trying to create video content for my website but I can't figure out how to do it. I think there are two parts to this problem. One is the technical aspect. What kind of equipment to use? How come my footage looks so dark? Or why do I look awkward in videos? And the second aspect of this problem is protecting your copyright. How can I share my choreography online and prevent people from copying my hard work? So in this video, I'll tackle the technical aspect of creating videos. And in my next video, I'll share with you my experience and tips on protecting your work online. So let's get started. First, you can't have footage without a recording device, camera. Fortunately, today we don't have to spend a lot of money to get a decent camera. In fact, any smartphone camera will be good enough for capturing your dance performance or creating instructional videos. I've been creating video content for about 4 years now and I started off with a phone camera that was Samsung Galaxy S2. Then I moved on to an HD camcorder and last couple years I've been using a DSLR camera. It's a Canon Rebel T4i. I love my DSLR camera and I have a shotgun mic that I can plug into the camera when I need my voice to be picked up really clearly but this one is optional. The DSLR camera allows me to play with things like aperture and ISO and whatnot. Having said, if you are starting to film footage, start with what you have. Here's the comparison of footage between my DSLR camera and my Samsung Galaxy S7. As you can see, the quality of footage is different, but both are good enough, at least good enough for tutorials and whatnot. Now, if you don't have an assistant and you'll be filming yourself, the only thing I recommend you invest in is a tripod and the right adapter which often comes with the tripod. Because adjusting the angle of your phone camera by leaning it against something is usually doesn't work and gets frustrating. I've used this tripod for the last few years that I got for about $80 Canadian, but there are some cheaper options out there. I'll include some links in the description so you can check them out. It came with this adapter for a regular camera, so you just screw it into your camera and set it up on the tripod. Or when I film with my phone camera, I use this smartphone adapter. I screw in the tripod adapter to the smartphone adapter and attach my phone like this. And I can record myself or my tutorials by myself. Lighting is so important to filming. If your footage looks dark, you need more lighting and likely you need more lighting than you think you need. If you're filming indoors, the best lighting is daylight. I'm actually standing about 6 feet from the window and I don't need any extra lighting. What you need is indirect sunlight, not the direct sunlight. Direct sunlight is a bit too harsh. So on a sunny day, just by standing by the window, you'll get most of the lighting you need. But if you're shooting in a dark studio, for example, you may have to bring in extra lighting. First, turn on all the lights you have. Even desk lamp or floor lamp would help. Just direct them towards you. And mirrors and reflective white walls help too. And if that's not sufficient, you can invest in an inexpensive set of lights like this. This set comes with two tall stands and one short stand and two umbrellas. This set was about $75 Canadian 
and I'll include a link to where you can purchase it in the description. So this one is basically an adjustable stand and you would attach a light bulb here and it comes with an umbrella like this that you would attach to the stand. The great thing about these lights is that you can place them wherever you want and, and on one side of the umbrella, you can get strong light on you or flip it for softer light. If you're shooting outside on a sunny day, the best time to do it is around sunrise or sunset. During the day, the sun will be too bright or you can shoot on a cloudy day. Now, if you want to showcase your teaching style in a video, your on-camera personality is very important. On camera, if you're being your normal self, you'll likely look more tired or sound less enthusiastic. It might feel weird talking to the camera at first, but remember there are people watching you on the other side. Hi everyone, it's Mal from Sparkly Belly. So up your energy, smile, and present yourself at your 120%. Hi everyone, it's Mal from Sparkly Belly. Now chances are you'll want to cut out some awkward silence or retakes or maybe you want to add some music to your video. Again, luckily today, most computers come with free video editing software and they're all pretty decent. For Windows, you can download Windows Movie Maker for free And for Mac, you can use iMovie. I've used both and they're both great for doing simple video editing like adding some music or voiceover or cut some parts out or add some cool transition like this. And both Movie Maker and iMovie are easy to use and you can find lots of tutorials out there. If you're thinking to step up your game, I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro and I highly recommend it. If you want to adjust the colors and brightness of the videos or if you want to combine lots of different files, you may need an advanced software like that. There's definitely a little learning curve at first, but once you understand their language, it's very easy to use and it's a very powerful tool. Now finally, once you publish your videos on your Facebook or YouTube or Vimeo, remember to share it. Many people post their videos on YouTube and just wait for people to come and watch, which doesn't work well usually. You spend a lot of time creating your videos, so remember to promote it so that lots of people can come and enjoy what you created. And focusing on entertaining people or creating something useful for people is important here. It's scary to share your videos at first because some people may not like it or some people might say mean stuff. But remember, there are a lot of people out there who will enjoy your videos. So email your video to your friends, your students, and share it on social media like Facebook and Instagram. And don't be afraid to get their feedback. They'll tell you what they like and you figure out your strengths and you know what kind of videos to create in the future. Hope this guide was useful and you'll be inspired to create more videos. If you're curious about where to get all the equipment that I showed in this video, I'll include a link to where you can purchase them in the description or on my blog. And next week, I'll share with you my tips on sharing and protecting your choreography online. So sign up for the Sparkly Belly newsletter from the link in the description so you won't miss it. Thank you for watching and keep sparkling.